Ladies and gentlemen, it is the man who has and continues to break more sales records of music in modern history. It's Garth Brooks on this radio station. Hello, Garth. (laughs) How are you doing? I am doing well. How are you? I am good. We're thrilled to be talking to you. And we heard the amazing news on Monday when you uh, spilled the beans and and, uh, a world tour with you and Trisha Yearwood in 2014. Tell us about it. I'm excited. And it's it's so cool. This is going to be the first time I've ever got to play music, you know, without feeling some kind of guilt about being gone so much. Uh, you know, Sandy and I uh, were married when we when it kicked off the first tour, and there were no cell phones then. So you always felt about guilty about being away. And then when you have children, you really feel guilty about being away. Well, now all the girls are off on their own. I'm getting to tour the world with my best friend and, and, and get to sing and play music. Uh, you know, I just don't know how it gets any better. That's pretty amazing. Uh, just thrilled, of course. Love love your music. Love Trisha's music. And just to, to have the both of you together is... is uh, I know all Garth fans and Trisha fans were just were really excited. I yeah, we've heard a rumor that you say something about three years that you're going to be on tour. Yeah, I mean if you, if you follow our history at all, we this is our third world tour, and the first two were three years each. So I just picked three years kind of out of the air because that's what the other ones were. The truth is, I would like it to be a twelve or fifteen year world <laughs> tour. I just I cannot wait to get out there and just play music and, and turn it up and get loud again. Now, Garth, I, I, I'm going to take you back in time to about, it was about 1995, 96. You played Roanoke, Virginia, and um, this was the, the occasion where you went running full tilt boogie for the rope, and you you missed the rope and went off the stage. I land right by John McBride, <laughs> his husband. He's the, he's the guy. So I land right by John McBride, right? Mm-hmm. And John McBride, when I hit John McBride, my microphone comes off and lands right by McBride's face because he's laying on the floor holding the ladder for me. Oh, when I hit John McBride, goes holy, <laughs> just goes out all over the entire arena, and uh, I jump back up because I missed the base stage, I missed everything. I landed uh-huh. in the concrete and then got up, put my headset back on, went out and finished the show about. Two o'clock that morning on the bus, I'm asleep, and it starts to creep in on me. I mean, everything is starting to kind of just kind of stove up on me. I limp out of the bus. York, Pennsylvania is the next gig, the very next day, right? (laughs) Yeah. State Fair. I limp out of the bus. I walk up to the stage, and on the back of it, these guys, because they love me, they have chalk outlined my body oh, no. at the bottom of the ladder, right? With a chalk, <laughs> with a chalk cowboy hat and a chalk headset mic on, right? <laughs> <laughs> they really care about. <laughs> I know you. I mean, you are so unpredictable that initially, I think the audience and the band were all trying to figure out was that a part of the show, and, <laughs> and, and everybody's well, kind of like waiting for you, going, "Okay, did he mean to do that?" <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's one of those things where you get up, dust yourself, I'll go, I meant to do that. So that, that hurt. Well, we're certainly glad that you were all right and, and uh, here to tell us about it. And, and and John McBride obviously tells that story, too. But um, Yes, but unfortunately, the floor at Roanoke will never be the same. <laughs> no, I expect not. <laughs> Well, look, uh, good grief. We're so excited. Congratulations, too, on the on the new box set and uh, number one, two weeks in a row. And just and thank you. It's time for us to have some Garth music. And thank you for, for sharing your stories with us and telling about your musical influences. Very, very, very sweet. It, it's an honor. We This is off the Vegas show, where the Vegas show is all about my influence. It started when I was a baby all the way up to when I got to make my own music and all the music that came in between there that influenced my stuff. So... It's pretty cool being the last of six kids and a mom and dad that started the family pretty early, so they were pretty young themselves, to get all the influence of Haggard and Jones and Buck Owens from my dad and uh, Mahalia Jackson and Marvin Gaye and Aretha Franklin from my mom. And then the older brothers had Simon and Garfunkel, Cat Stevens, all the way up to the Eagles and Bob Seger. So it kind of all funneled down to me, and then I found my own guys like Straight and Keith Whitley and uh, I really enjoy this set. That's neat. Uh, now, I've known that your mom was a singer, and of course, on Capitol Records. What Did your dad sing as well? No, my dad played guitar. That's how I learned. Okay. So uh, he taught me how to play guitar, and mom sang. So that was a pretty good little uh, duo at the house. And then, of course, my sister Betsy uh, was probably the best musician and the best singer in the family. And then, you know, the brothers all played something. So it, right. it was a good little family outing every time we'd break the music out. That's that's wonderful to be and to be able to keep family around you and again just to, for that support and encouragement. I know, I know that you're um, you've lost both of your parents now and I have as well. And that that certainly influences the way you live life. Yeah, it does. But you know what? If your parents did their job, then they live forever in you. And uh, I got to tell you, uh, 
there wasn't a day my dad didn't pull me over and give me some advice, and there wasn't a day that my mom didn't pull me over and give me some advice, and there was never a day they went by that both of them didn't pull me over and they told me they loved me. So oh. I'm a lucky guy. And I expect you probably live that way with your daughters. Well, i got to tell you, man, I smother them to death. You know, <laughs> Everyone's saying, hey, I know why you're getting out of the house because you're surrounded with all women and you need to break. I said... You don't get it. They've been asking me to leave the house for the last three to five years. <laughs> Dad, why don't you get back out on the road? Uh, but because I do, I just smother them. I am so in love. With now, them. will the uh, will the girls be touring with you as well as uh, with Trisha? Uh, no, I think you know they're going to be off doing their own thing. As the oldest two, I you know I'll be lucky if I talk to them once a week. They're so busy. Is that right? And then the youngest one will be going off to college, so she'll be she'll be busy doing their thing and. Uh, so it'll just be me and Ms. Sherwood, the empty nest syndrome, and, and we're going to go out and play some music. <laughs> All right. Well, we're talking about the music and Trisha. Uh, did you write the call, the new duet? Oh, this is Karen Rochelle. Karen Rochelle is a fabulous young artist there in Nashville, and uh, she's just, uh, I don't know, I just think she's the bomb. So she wrote the call. Have you been doing some writing? Uh, not really. I mean, I think you have to be around writers to write kind of thing, and you have to be focused on it. You got to, you know, people, I guess, don't believe me when they say, what have you been doing the last decade? And I honestly tell them I've been going to soccer games and, and fundraisers for sporting events. And I've been driving around on my tractor and just uh, just being a dad. I'm going to go back to one of your lyrics is one uh, that I've always loved. And it kind of fits today as well as it did, uh, you know, 10, 12 years ago. And as long as one heart still holds on, hope is never really gone. Hope has never really been gone for our Garth Brooks fans that you would be back and on tour, and we are so excited that you're coming back. That is the sweetest thing. Thank you so much. And using a Tony Arado lyric, the guy that wrote the dance, is perfect. That's that's awesome. Thank you for thank you for saying it in that way. Garth, we can't wait to see you, and, and hopefully we will see you in Roanoke, Virginia. I look forward to it. We'll make sure that they put some uh, some padding on the floor for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'll be bringing my own padding this time. Thank you very much. That'd be fantastic. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Merry Christmas, honey. Merry Christmas. Thank you for your time. God bless.